the home of the common Joe and the common Sally in the know, even more so than all those media talking heads. Rocking in my chair, biding my time, knowing that Dion, he ain't prime time. He's a con man now, so we'll call him con time. Dion con time. And Saban, quit apologizing, brother. If you mean something and you say something and you mean it, stick by it, man. Quit placating to these hippie hearts like Paul Feinbaum and them pissing their little panties because someone said a mean thing and criticized con time. Dion con time. <laughs> Let's talk. Here we are again. It's another episode of the OCF. That's me, the Outlaw of College Football, also known as JPC. You can also find me on Facebook under Jesse Paul Clark. I'm easier to get in touch with via Facebook Messenger if you want to throw me some ideas and whatnot. Also, before we get started on this subject of the con man known as Dion and why Nick Saban should stop apologizing to said person, I'd like to ask you to like, share, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Because subscriptions are most important. They keep me up and going, keep me motivated. And if you really want to donate to the show, you can at the bottom down there in the uh, like and share options underneath this video. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see next to the download button a little heart that says thanks. You can hit that thanks button and donate a few dollars to the show. And that way I'm not as dependent on on YouTube uh, for funding. Now, getting right to it, I'd like to uh, talk about Nick Saban and his apologies that he's been making here lately. Um, Nick, don't apologize, man. Don't apologize for something that you actually mean. Now, if you didn't mean it, I damn well near know you wouldn't have said it. Because you're always calculating your little press conferences and these little luncheons and whatnot and these booster meetings. So I want you to stop placating and worrying about what uh, certain people think about you. You know, because it all boils down to has nothing to do with race, has nothing to do with gender. It's all about the person these days. People that try to hide behind that stuff, to me, are just cowards, and they want a handout. It has, like I said, it has nothing to do with race. As a matter of fact, if there's any racism involved, it's on the other flip side of the coin now, because what you have now is if someone like a white man, for example, like myself, if we have a different opinion from those people on the left and those people that run these Marxist and um sex trafficking organizations like the BLM, if you disagree with them, they'll try to shout you down with those false labels because they know that people will roll over for stuff like that. And that's basically what con man Dion's doing. You know, he wants to be called Coach Prime. He's always bitching and complaining that he's not getting the proper respect in being called Coach. You know, I don't... I don't call Nick Saban coach because he's not my freaking coach. He coaches my team, but he's not my coach. A lot of people do call him coach. But, you know, usually that's reserved for somebody on up in years. And, you know, Neon Dion supposedly, he just came onto the scene. You haven't really earned that respect yet, Dion. Prime time, right? No. You're not prime time no more, man. You're con time. Because you ain't nothing, been nothing but a con in all this, man. Yeah, your team went, what, 11-2 and two last year or some shit? With you not even coaching two or three of the games because you, you stubbed your big toe or you cut your damn toenail too deep and, and gave yourself a toe infection or some shit, and so you missed two or three games? That's not a real coach, man. 
and you make it out like you're in here to be some kind of great savior or, or charitable man and helping the HBCUs, but you're not. It's only because Florida State turns you down. You probably Wake Forest and Louisiana Tech and Sam Houston State and North Dakota State all turns you down, man. And so you went to the HBCUs and played that card, man. That's exactly what I think happened. Like I said, I'm the least racist person you ever meet, man. It's just that I keep it real. And people don't like that. They want to have an excuse for their failures. Well, Dion, your your excuse for your failures is just not, it's not, I'm just not buying it, man. Because if you're all about the HBCUs and have been for quite some time, according to you, then why did you go play your football at Florida State? And when you applied at Florida State and didn't get the job at Florida State, why didn't you go apply at some of these Wake Foresters or something as an assistant or something? You didn't want that. You want to be at the top, in, in at the very top echelon. I know that people say, oh, well, he applied for a graduate assistant's job at Florida State. Well, come on now. We all know Dion. Dion's an attention whore. And Dion wanted to be like an upper echelon assistant at Florida State at first. They forget to tell you about that. And see, he wants to come in at a big level like that, knowing that he has a reputation that precedes him. So you got to earn your way, Dion. you got to prove that you're a mature individual. And you're going a long way right now in doing some of that by being the head coach of a team and going 11-2, although, like I said, most of that can be attributed to your assistants taking over when you stubbed your toe. So I want you to stop saving, apologizing to someone that does not deserve it, someone that they're trying to prop up for whatever reason. And just, he's a con man. And they're talking about, you got people out there like my buddy Kuz, uh, Justin Walker on Kuz's Corner talking about Alabama should be worried. Really? Worried about what, man? A team that didn't even, didn't even make the top 100 in recruiting? We're supposed to be re, re, uh, concerned because Dion was able to con maybe two or three players out of 500 players to come play for him in some um, holier-than-thou grandstanding agenda that he has. When in reality, what's going to happen is Dion's going to get tired of this whole thing. It's like a toy to him. He's going to get tired of it, and then in about three or four years, he's either going to be out of coaching college football altogether and probably in a booth somewhere announcing games, or he's going to be given an opportunity at a higher level college coaching job, maybe a mid-tier college coaching job like a TCU or a Wake Forest or something like that. I'd be interested to see in three or four years if Dion's still at Jackson State. Especially if he continues to do good, he's probably going to get an offer, and then we're going to see if he's all about just making it about the HBCUs. I'm going to try to come in here and make the HBCUs relevant again. HBCUs have always been relevant in their league that they got started by themselves. They separated themselves. Nobody made them separate. They're historically black colleges, but they made themselves historically black colleges. They made that assertion. And yeah, I know it was done back in the day because of some not so nice um, white people. But now it's not like that anymore, so why is there still in separation? It seems like a form of racism to me. You know, it's just like BET. I mean, why is it this black entertainment TV? Why is there a separation of race? Why is there, and I know white people on BET, but why is the company itself asserted itself as black? Why is the BLM asserted itself as black? These people are trying to separate us by race because it's profitable for them. That's what we got to realize as a human race. Is these people, these organizations now are playing off of some shit that happened 60 years ago, 50 years ago. 
and they really don't care about us as a whole. All they know is, is to keep us separated and to keep us accusing each other of racism makes them money. And that shit's got to stop, man. This is a deeper seated issue. Got a little off base here, but it's like, it's almost like, like I said, it's a little bit deeper seated, but it's almost like people want you to apologize for something that you had no part of. My immediate ancestors had nothing to do with slavery or any of that racist bullshit. None of them. So I'm not going to apologize and roll over just because I'm white. For me to do that would me being, would me would be me being racist against my own race. Because at that point, I'm succumbing to the fact that people are judging me by my white skin color and automatically assuming that if I have a different opinion than them because they're black or purple or brown or yellow, that I'm racist. And I'm conceding to that, and that's a form of racism. You judging me by my white skin color is racist. And I know a lot of people say that minorities can't be racist. That's the lo biggest load of horse shit I've ever heard. Anyone can be racist. If you judge someone by their skin color, and everybody's probably done it at some point in their life, no matter what color they are, black, white, yellow, if you make an assertion and look at someone because of their skin color, like if a uh, minority looked at me and said, oh, gee, JPC got that promotion because he was white. Well, then you know what you've done? You've judged me by my skin color. And that makes you what? Makes you racist just as bad as those KKK uh, cowards back in the day. And like I said, I'm not racist at all, man. I'm just not going to roll over and apologize for my skin color because it has nothing to do with anything that I do. It has nothing to do. It has no impact on how I make my decisions whatsoever. You can lie and say it does, but it don't. And like I said, that comes back to Neon Dion. Mr. Woe is me. Poor old Dion. Mr. Bully that poured a bottle of water or whatever substance it was on Tim McCarver's head because he criticized Dion and said a mean thing. So Dion goes in there and bullies him and pours shit on top of his head because he's a coward. That's what Dion does. He cons people. And that's what he's doing now. He gets one or two of these good players and he hypes them up and he takes them into a room by, his, by their self with their parents who yearn for the yesteryear of old prime time playing football and he cons them and to sign a deal with an inferior university as far as athletics goes because he knows and they know and they're going to be oh you said inferior inferior in the aspect of being able to provide this young man with the advantages that would probably benefit him in the long run in getting the NFL. And of course, there's been players that have played on the FCS level and the HBCU level that's made it to the NFL. But if we're all honest with each other. If you go and play for Ohio State or Notre Dame or Alabama or Oklahoma and you, have, you play at Jackson State, Who's going to have the better opportunity and the better chance at making the NFL? If you're honest with yourself, you're going to say those other four and not four teams from the FCS. So Dion doesn't tell them the whole story. He cons them, and he picks out just a couple of cherries that they're able to pay millions of dollars to. And he says they didn't, or he hasn't got it set up in some kind of trust fund down the road for them to get. He's a freaking liar. And he's a con man. And Nick Saban shouldn't have to come on here and apologize. So y'all don't have to wet your panties and change your little diapers so you don't rash up. Nick Saban shouldn't be responsible for you rashing up 
over something that's not even there. It's just something that y'all make up and something that y'all try to keep stirred up because y'all see it as a profitable situation for you. And you don't care about the rest of us as human beings and you try to keep us separated by race because y'all all freaking cowards. And that's all I got to say about that. Like, share, comment, and subscribe to this channel. And as always, KMCA. Oh, and class is now dismissed.